master over him. Because death did not reign over Christ, death does not reign and have, or have death is not master over um, the Christian. It's, it's amazing because of what he did, he conquered death. He conquers the death, the sin in our life. It's amazing. Well, would 10 and 11 go along with that? Read it. I love it. You're right. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's right. And what that's saying, if you're in Christ, if you if, if you are in Christ, if you have been saved, the power of the gospel is at work in your life now, bearing fruit and, sh and, and showing itself to the world. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. And all because of what he did, the death that he died. And I'd like to add gratitude to that verse too. Um, verse 10. Uh, no, um, but verse 11, likewise, in the in the King James, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be gratefully dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, okay. So it's the power of God for salvation. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. Let's back up to the power of God. This is really important. It's not merely the offer of God. It's not merely the offer of God. And, and, and what it says is that the gospel actually is able to save. It's actually able to save. The gospel is able to save. Um, and, and this is where a lot of the theological conversations we had in the salutation really apply. And this is why we spent so much time. We talked about some um, pretty heady stuff, pretty heavy stuff sometimes controversial stuff. Even in this room, it's proved to be controversial. You know, about there, there are those whom God has, um, has, has, has chosen from before the foundation of the world for salvation um, to, be, to be conformed to the image of His Son. And he, by His Holy Spirit, He calls them from, um, like, like, like He called Lazarus from the grave. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And, the, and, and that, that, that was an actual powerful word that gave that actually put life into Lazarus and caused him um, to to willingly come forth. Um, and uh, but before that work of the Spirit is done, and if that work of the Spirit is not done in giving a person a new heart, um, regenerating them, make, bringing them from spiritual death, to spiritual life, um, that they just can't. Um, and it, it, this this that theology is really important here because. Um, a, any contrary theology to that will say that the, the gospel is a mere offer, offer of salvation. Um, and and, and, and it, it, it completely rests on the person to actually give it power. And, um, you know, like it, it says God has done 99.999%, but God is unable to save. Um, you must do this, you know, 0.001%. Um, to to make it so that you can be saved, and um, and and that takes the power out of the gospel. It just does. It it means that it's a mere offer of salvation. Um, it it means that um, power into the hands of man. What did you say? Power into the hands of man. It, it does. It puts the power in the yeah in the hands of man. Um, and so so that's why we're not going to go. Um, maybe we'll talk about it later, but we're not going to. Um, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not going to say what the discussion I don't want. I'm not going to say what the discussion will be, but we don't know what we're going to talk about later, but but I'm not going back into the theology of it all because we spent a lot of time laying that foundation. But that's why this is significant because, because, because all that stuff gives the gospel power and it puts the power in the hands of God and His very message. Um, look, at, look, at, um, look at Romans 10. What we see is that... Um, the gospel is the very means of salvation. The gospel is uh, it's, it's the power of God in the sense that it is His means of saving people. It is His means of opening people's eyes. It is His means of raising people to life. When, so when Jesus said to Lazarus in John 11, 11, Lazarus, come forth! That was Jesus Christ, who is the gospel Himself. Um, 
that, that is Jesus Christ um, calling out um, to Lazarus. And so as we as we give the gospel, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and so and so that gospel um, going out is the means by which God saves people. It, um, it is the power by which He saves people. So in Romans ten, we look at verse thirteen and fourteen. It says, and this is coming from the Old Testament in verse 13, it says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah, that's, that's great. I love that. I love that. Um, whoever, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Without question, without um, limits. That whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It means whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But then it goes on to say, how then... Will they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you have to believe in order to, to call on him for salvation. But then it says, well, how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? Ooh, heard. There's the gospel. Okay. How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? Beginning at verse 15, how will they preach unless they're sent? Let's jump to uh, verse 17. It says, So faith comes from hearing. Remember, we're saved by, by God's grace through faith. That's Ephesians 2. We're saved by God's grace through faith. So faith comes from hearing. And hearing by the word of Christ. The way faith comes is by hearing the gospel. And that 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 hearing of the gospel produces belief in some people. And that belief produces salvation. It's the, it's the means, the gospel is the means of, of, that God uses to awaken people to faith. Um, and, um, and which, is, which is why the gospel is the power of God for salvation. Look at um, 2 Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians 2, verses 13 and um, 14. It says, But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation. That's an earlier conversation we had. God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. And I love this right here in verse 14. It was for this he called you through our gospel. You hear that? Through our gospel. I have a question. Yep. Uh, my verse says because God shows you as the first fruits. What's the first fruit? Um, first fruits is. The one who's picked first? No. It's not about chronological um, order. It is, um, it, it is actually first in, in importance. Uh, first, um, I'm missing. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking for a word. Looking for a word. What word am I looking for? Um, choice. Um, choice. Um, okay. Question. Okay, here, let, let me illustrate it. Let me illustrate it. So, um, I love all people. I, 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 I had three boys in my house, and I loved all kids. Um, I had I had a general love for all kids, but those three. Those were mine. Forrest, Eli, Simon. Those were mine. They were. That's 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 first fruits. Okay. Um, that you you are you are mine. Isaiah forty three says you are mine. Says the Lord. Um, they they are they're first in importance, first in significance. It's not a chronological thing. Also quality. Um, and um, yeah, there's first, a quality. First in quality. Yeah, when there, when, when quality the Bible too. when the when the Old Testament says to give your first fruits unto the Lord, it means give the best. Yeah, give the first, best of what first you have. First the best. That's right. Yep. You know, it's not necessarily yeah. the fir first fruit you pick because those might not be the best. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, um, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's a really broad term. You actually, there's a good. You could go into a good study on the word first fruits. Um, and so, good question. It's hard to answer in a minute or two. Um, and so, but look what it says in verse 14 of Second Thessalonians 2. It was for this he called you. It's for what? Well. He chose you from the beginning for salvation. And it was for this salvation that He chose you for from the beginning 
It was for that that he called you. There's that effectual calling. How did he call you? Through the gospel. He called you through the gospel. He called you through the God, very means of him saving people. The, his very power of saving people. He calls us through the gospel. We see this. Um, turn to the right a few more pages. And, um, 2 Timothy 1. 9 and 10. 2 Timothy 1, 9 and 10. Speaking of God, it says, God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He saved us. He's called us. There's that calling again. It's come up all over the place. I love this. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. That's the He chose us in Him for salvation. Um, uh, he's, he's according to his own purpose and grace which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity verse 10 but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel you see that he brought life and immortality to light through the gospel <laughs> the gospel is the power of God for salvation is what it says. And then it goes on to say, for salvation to everyone who believes. And we're back in Romans 1.16. Salvation to everyone who believes. And to us, like we can't take that for granted. Like to us, we're like, yeah, duh. Like as Christians, you know, like that's like, a, well, yeah, duh. You know, yeah, anyone who believes the gospel, you know, you'd be saved. You'd be it, you just got to believe the gospel, and um, with a right understanding of the word belief, you know, and um, and so we, we need to understand like this is a very revolutionary statement in this time. Like the Jews, they thought that that salvation was for them only. They thought that the Messiah was for them only. Um, and and, it, and it's interesting if you look in in John. Four, you have the story of the woman at the, the woman at the well, and um, and she says salvation is from the Jews, and and that was um, the, the the thinking of a lot of the Jewish people is they thought that really what that meant was salvation is for the Jews. But she says in John four twenty two salvation is from the Jews, not for the Jews and only. Yeah, and only the Jews. Salvation is for the Jews and the Jews only, and. Um, and uh, the Gentiles, the Greeks, uh -uh, there's no salvation for them because we are the chosen people of God. And they didn't have a right understanding of what that meant because they were chosen in one sense, but they were chosen that salvation would be from them. Not merely for them, but they were chosen that the Messiah would come from them because Christ is our salvation. That's what they were chosen for. They were chosen to bring about the Messiah um, in, in the world. And that was their, their primary main reason of being chosen. And every, all the other reasons are small reasons that are directly connected to that. Well, I did rough, but I got to head out of here. Hey, man. Love you, bro. Love Thanks you for all. coming. Hey, all right, my hunter. Hey, hey, I'll see you all next week. Yeah, and God bless great. your work night, man. Did yeah, you have get, a great shift. Did, I will. Did, did you get your stuff out of the freezer and the fridge? Yep. Okay, cool. Love you, bro. Awesome. Hey, love you all. Take it easy next week. Yeah, see you later. Take care. Blessings. <laughs> To make sure this freezer is all the way closed. It's left over. Okay. And so. Alright. Oh, my umbrella. Uh, okay. So. <coughs> so this is a revolutionary. You too. Revolutionary statement that 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 the gospel is the power of salvation, the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To everyone who believes. In the in the Greeks, they thought that salvation was not for them. So they they. They weren't necessarily trying to to find salvation. Uh, they uh, they you just look at the culture, the Greek culture. It was uh, idolatrous, proudly idolatrous, you know. And and um, and and I'm not going to read it for the sake of time. But if you look at Ephesians two verses thirteen through eighteen, you will see that the gospel brings. The Jews and the Greeks, remember the Greeks are everyone that's not a Jew. The Jew and the Gentile, the gospel brings them into one. And so all who believe, Jews 
and Greeks are one body, brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you read, you will find in Ephesians 2, 13, 18, that is through faith in his work on the cross. And so, so it, it's salvation to everyone who believes. And, and where there was a dividing wall, where there was division, where there was a separation, Christ abolished that and, 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 and brought both groups into one through his blood. Amazing, it's amazing. So there's salvation for everyone who believes, it says. Um, and, and who believes? What's that, who believes? It doesn't say salvation for everyone. That's important. But everyone who believes. And it, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is really clear. This is not the power of God. Is, the, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone, period. It's everyone who believes. 1 Corinthians 1, 21. It says, For since in the wisdom of God, the world, that's the unbelieving world, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message message preached, that is the gospel. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. God was well pleased that through the gospel he would save those who believe. The gospel is the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Back up to verse 18, same chapter, 1 Corinthians 1:18. It says the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The power of God. The word of the cross, that's the gospel. The gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. What does that say about the gospel as it relates to those who are perishing? Those who are unbelievers. The gospel has no power. It only is the power of God for salvation of those who are who believe, those who are being saved, those who are saved. It's the gospel has no power apart from faith. It's like there's you know some things um, like you take epoxy. There's a there's a there's a part A and a part B. Um, it, like one of them, one part A alone um, doesn't isn't a strong thing. You know, if you put just part A of epoxy on something and you put the two things together, that's not going to hold. But, uh, or just part B, you know, faith. Let's say faith, you know, part B. If you have faith apart from the gospel, faith apart from Christ, we well, you have faith at the universe, going back to the list, man, Lord save these people. They come up five or six times. Um, the Unitarian Universalists um, save them. Um, you know, you just have faith in just whatever. That's like to just part B of the epoxy. I have no strength. I have no power. So like faith, like God, the gospel is the power of God for everyone who believes. The power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. So that's like take, that, so like faith is like that, that activating ingredient um, that, that, that gives the gospel its power. Um, and and, uh, and it look, look again down in verse 24. It's 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Says, but, to, but to those who are the called, oh man, there we are again, back in that the call. Those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, everyone. Those who are the called is the same as those who believe. It's the same as those who are being saved. Everyone, both Jews and Greeks, Christ. Remember, Christ is the gospel. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom. It's funny, right before that, it says Jews look for signs and and Greeks look for wisdom. And, and, and what's amazing is once you believe, then we see signs. We see, the, we see the signs of God everywhere, don't you? I mean, you look at your hands again. A sign. Oh, wow, man, God is definitely real. I see signs, you know, look at the, just a go, whatever comes to your mind. You see signs everywhere after, you know, once you're a person of faith. 
and you see wisdom. You see, you see the. You, you want wisdom, man. You, you don't have wisdom apart from Christ, but in Christ, it's, it's interesting how faith actually gives you these great things that they were desiring. But apart from faith, they didn't have it. Um, you know, and so, so uh, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God to those who are called, whether Jews or Greeks, um, and and so. So you see, faith is that activating ingredient that gives the gospel its power. Without faith, there's no power in the gospel. Without faith, there's no salvation. Um, and so, so, so that's, that's a really important thing. Like, how is the gospel empowered? It's empowered by faith. And day by day. I mean, look, like, um, day by day in, in the life of the believer. And so that's, that's where it comes back to, well, that, doesn't that mean that it's all dependent upon us? Doesn't that mean that it's just a mere offer and it's dependent upon us believing? And not I would argue, but I would argue that the scripture argues that no, it's not. Even there at that point, it's not dependent on us. Because what does it say about faith? It says something very important about faith. Go to Ephesians 2. What is this belief? What is this saving belief? What is this faith? It says in Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. That, that When it says, and that, it's referring to the faith. Every, every Bible scholar, whatever your theological position is, will, it, they, they admit that the word that is, is talking about the word faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that faith is not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. That faith, if you have faith, then guess what? You say, thank you, Lord, I have faith. Thank you that I believe. All goes back from Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. Romans 11, 36, to Him be the glory of God. All things, faith. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. That's James 1, 17 or 18. Every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven with the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. So if you have faith, thank God for that. Don't boast. You can't verse. The reason this, verse 9, Ephesians 2, is not a result of works so that no one may boast. This is so that no one may boast. So you can't say, ah, oh, I'm better than that guy because I chose to believe. You say, oh, man, thank you, Lord. You're humble. This is a theology that humbles you and say, wow one for the grace of God, I wouldn't even believe. Wow, that's the grace of God at work in me. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For to you it has been granted. This is the gift of God. It has been granted. Okay. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake. Not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And oftentimes we read this like, "Wow, it's not only been granted to you know um, that that I would believe in him, but also that I would suffer." And you focus all on suffering, but back up. It says that it has been granted for his sake that we would believe in him. It's been granted that we would believe. That's a that's a gift. That granting, uh, especially if you look at it in the context of John six. Um, a few verses in John 6, that granting is a power, an inescapable thing. It's, it's something that God places upon us. Um, let's look more about, look more at this faith. Turn to the left, go to Galatians 3. Galatians 3. What verse was that in Philippians again? That was Philippians 1.29. Now we're in Galatians 3, looking at just one little phrase in um, two verses. Galatians 3.23 But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed. Before faith came. Faith is something that came to us. It was a gift. It was granted to us. Faith came to us. Look at verse um, 25. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, a tutor being the law. Now we are under grace. Now that faith has come, faith is something that came to us. There was, a, there was, a, you went through a time. Some of you 
might not remember this because you were so young, but some of us do remember there was a time when we didn't believe, and then suddenly we believed. Suddenly it made sense. So, suddenly we wanted Christ. So, it, something happened. Well, that was the gift of God. That was, that was faith coming to us. Um, Hebrews 2, no, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, 2. Hebrews 12, 2. This was a good one. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the author and perfecter of faith. So from beginning to end, our faith is, 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 is from Christ. He is the author of it. If he didn't author, uh, you know you know where the author is, writes the book. If he doesn't write the book, there is no book. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't exist. You know, there's, there's no book with my name on it. Why? Because I never authored one. <laughs> you know? Um, and he's the perfecter of our faith. Further back in Hebrews 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Hebrews 2, 10. It was fitting for him, that being Christ, for whom are all things, and through whom are all things. I think I'm seeing 11, Romans 11, 36. From him, through him, to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. I think I see that right there. It was fitting for him, Christ, for whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to perfect the author of their salvation through sufferings. The author of, sal of their salvation is Christ. The very author of our salvation is Christ. How are we saved? We're saved by faith. We're saved by God's grace through faith. He's the author of that. Amazing. 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. And I'm going to all these verses because this is one of those kind of controversial things in the church. Is, is, is faith, you know, a gift that must be bestowed upon us by God or not? It's a discussion that's had amongst different camps in the church. And the reason I'm hammering out, these are just these are just some of a lot of verses. I'm hammering this out because I want to show this isn't just in one verse. 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Oh, keep turning. Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have, faith is something that's received. It's received. It's not conjured up within ourselves. We can't make someone believe. Like, I, you know, Devin, I was as clear, I think, as clear as can be about what the gospel is. I could have gone on for hours and days in telling him the gospel and his need for, uh, but I, I couldn't conjure up faith with him and he couldn't conjure up faith. He was spiritually dead and blind. He was clearly blind and he was clearly deaf. Um, spiritually deaf. Clearly. It was evidenced. It was proven. Faith has to be received. And it's received by God. And it even says, um, to those who have received the faith of the same kind as ours, it's received right here by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's, it, it's, that, that's how it, it comes about. It comes about by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's pretty phenomenal. That's a powerful word. Matthew 13, 11. Matthew 13, 11 says, I love this. Jesus answered them. His disciples. He's talking to his disciples. He's basically, he's explaining, he was, he was teaching in parables. Now he's, they, they ask, why do you speak in parables? And Jesus answered them in Matthew 13, 11. To you, my disciples, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been granted. 
to you it's been granted, but to them it's not been granted. So he was speaking in analogies for people who did not receive him yet, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and it makes sense to them. And, um, no, not so that it would make sense. Um, he is a God who reveals himself and a God who hides himself. Um, and and uh, his, his desire is for those, uh, those who are his to hear and understand. And, um, and, and it says he had in Romans 9, he has mercy on whom he has mercy and compassion on whom he has compassion. And it even goes on to talk um, about how some he hardens. Some yeah. he, he hardens. Like Pharaoh. It's a perfect example, and Pharaoh is used as an example in that passage. Um, but but to you it's been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. Um, faith must be a gift. Romans 12, 3. Hey, we made it to Romans again. Romans 12, 3. And this is just important because we have to understand what saving faith is. This is that's why I'm hammering this. We have to understand what saving faith is. And it ha it, it, we have to, if we have it, we have to realize it's something that must humble us and not make it so that we can think we're any any better than anyone else. Romans 12, 3. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think. So he's saying, have a right understanding of yourself. Don't think so highly of yourself. But to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So, I have a measure of faith. I've got a lot of unbelief, <laughs> for sure. But I do have a measure of faith. And you have a measure of faith. And, you know, if we are believers, we have a measure of faith. None of us... Um, our faith is not yet perfected, but thank God that Jesus is also the perfecter of our faith. But he's the author of our faith. It says he has allotted to each a measure of faith. I, I am going to give you, Forrest, faith in me to this measure. And in these areas. You're going to be able to trust me easily in these areas. These other areas are going to be hard for you. And I will perfect that in you. You know, that's that that's what it's talking about here. He's, he's the author and the perfecter of our faith, and he's allotted to each a measure of our faith. So praise God. If we believe in God, praise God. Thank you, God. Thank you that I believe. I don't deserve this. You know, it's a gift. It's a gift so that no one can boast. <coughs> and uh, um, when, I want to wrap up here, but but just for later study, look at 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 and compare it with 2 Corinthians 4.6. Just for later study. Not, we're not going to do it now. No. You look at 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 and you look at 2 Corinthians 4.6 and there's a lot of parallels and contrasts in there. And you will see that in 4.4 4, it's talking about the unbeliever and how we're, 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 we're completely blind and unable to see um, the glory of God in Christ. And then 4.6 talks about the believer and it says we're able to see the glory of God in Christ. And it says how, and it says because God has shown in our hearts. That's how. God has shown in our hearts to give us that knowledge. Um, and so, so it says, basically the same faith is a gift. If we can see, so like the spiritual sight is a gift. Um, before that, we're blind. Um, and then, um, and then we're, we're almost done this. Uh, Matthew 11, 27. This is a verse that really hit Nick really hard a few weeks ago in this very Bible study. What is it, Matthew? Matthew 11, 27. Jesus speaking, he says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And then here's this amazing statement. And anyone whom the Son wills to reveal Him. The only people that know the Father, that know the Son, 
are those to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. You know, this is not. Can you see? This is not my theology of trying to make this up. Like this is all over Scripture. You know, Paul says in Galatians 1.16 that God was pleased to reveal His Son in me. God was pleased to reveal His Son in me after He was kind of given a testimony of His sinfulness and His sinful past life, and then it says, but then God was pleased to reveal His Son in me, and that changed me. Here I am writing this letter. You know, um, as Galatians 1.16, God was pleased to reveal His Son in me. So Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to hammer this really, really hard because we could go into a really wonderful entire theological discussion on this. But I want to just keep it real simple for the sake of time. Remember, it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. That everyone, everyone. It's a revolutionary message. Whether you're Jew, whether you're Greek. But it does say to the Jew first, and that's what's interesting, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We better remember in, in Romans 1, 2, um, when we, we talked about this, speaking of the gospel of God, it says the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And we talked about how the whole Old Testament is the gospel. Devin asked that today. You know, is the gospel like a part of the Bible? And I said, no, the gospel is the whole Bible. <laughs> and the whole Old Testament is, is a, a telling of the gospel and a revealing of Christ and our need for him. The Old Testament and the New Testament are the same in that regard. The, it was the, 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 so, so and, 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 and the Old Testament 